When we look at the energy grids of today, we find coal and natural gas still dominate in many places. Solar is becoming so cheap that many people in the you-know-who industry are trying to paint free energy as a bad thing. Nuclear is getting more attention, but still faces many barriers in many places. Hydrogen is being pushed as an energy carrier for thermal plants, but most hydrogen is produced via steam reforming natural gas, which produces carbon emissions anyway. What we need is a new energy carrier that can be transported like coal, used in thermal power plants, is cheap, and very abundant. Fortunately, such an energy carrier does exist, and it's all around you. It's probably right in front of you, and it's even in your blood. Metal burning. When thinking of energy production, metal usually isn't on people's list, but metals such as iron and aluminum have fairly high energy densities and can burn in air. Aluminum powder is even used in solid rocket engines like the SRBs of the space shuttle. In principle, iron powder can be blown into a burner and ignited, producing a self-sustaining flame to heat a boiler, the same as a natural gas or coal plant. Unlike a natural gas and coal plant, the waste gases produced by the plant would just be hot, oxygen-depleted air. No carbon emissions, no sulfur emissions, no NOx emissions, with the solid waste just being oxide powder that can be reprocessed and reused, more on that later. There are some things to consider, pros and cons as with any technology, so let's look at a few. Cons Starting with the drawbacks, the energy required to reprocess iron back into iron powder is higher than what is released when the iron powder itself is burned. So you would need a power input from another source to reprocess the oxides into powder that can then be shipped back to the metal burning plants for burning. This is a disadvantage to natural gas and coal, which generally produce more energy than is needed to refine it. In this way, metal fuel is functionally a battery, a way to transport energy, but suffers losses. Metal powders, such as aluminum and iron, can also be bad when chronically inhaled. Granted, this is the same with coal dust used in power plants, but it's still a downside. A metal burning plant would need to ensure the metal powder is strictly contained and controlled to keep it separate from those working in the plant. Respirators and air filters could help. Another downside is one it shares with coal, and that it needs bulk vehicle transport, like trains and trucks. Natural gas can be piped, which in theory is efficient, but we all know how much the fossil fuel industry values safety and build quality. To feed the power plants, metal powder would need to be transported via rail and trucks, as well as transporting the oxide powders to reprocessing plants. Not an insurmountable challenge, the infrastructure is all there already, but it's still something to be considered. Pros Now for the upsides of metal fuel. The biggest one being, it's clean. The reaction is simply fast rusting. The iron binds with oxygen, forming iron oxide quickly in an exothermic reaction. The waste is just hot air and oxide dust. The oxide dust can be easily separated out with any remaining particles filtered before the waste air is released. Unlike coal, there is no carbon, sulfur, uranium, or NOx waste. The oxide waste can be reprocessed over and over and over again. Once burned, the waste powder can be taken to a plant that produces hydrogen cleanly, and use that hydrogen to turn the oxide back into pure metal, with the products of this reaction being metal and water vapor. A nuclear power plant, solar plant, hydro plant, or any other clean power station that is locational can be used to produce the hydrogen to reprocess the oxides. A solar plant can be built where sun is abundant, or a hydro plant on a river, or waste heat from an existing nuclear power plant can be used, allowing for a safe way to transport power to places that can't have those energies sourced on site. In the same way a coal plant doesn't need a coal mine on site, or a natural gas plant doesn't need a well on site. Iron is more abundant and cheaper than coal. It's also more stable than fossil fuels on the market, meaning energy produced from it would be far more stable and even cheaper than that of fossil fuels. Scrap iron and aluminum can be used in bulk, reducing the amount of new materials needed to be mined, with the oxides being able to be reprocessed indefinitely, further reducing how much new metal is needed per year. Implications what we have here is an energy carrier that can be easily transported and reused in a closed loop forever. Once the lifetime loop is running, from burning to processing to burning again, the whole process becomes cheaper and cleaner. With coal, you need to constantly mine new coal and find ways to dispose of the toxic ash, which is usually dumped in landfills or waterways. 
you know, the usual places you would expect to dump waste enriched with heavy metals and radioactive elements. With iron powder, there is no waste needing to be dumped. The gas waste is just hot air, and the solid waste can be made back into fuel again. The whole process is basically just adding oxygen to iron, then removing oxygen from iron in a loop forever. The iron is never consumed, it never stops existing. The energy output of an iron burning plant is comparable to that of a coal or gas plant, with aluminum offering more energy density than iron. The energy produced by burning iron is just as reliable as coal or natural gas, and it can be used as energy storage. When a nuclear plant, solar plant, or wind farm are producing more energy than needed, they can use the extra energy to produce hydrogen. The hydrogen can be used to make steel or ammonia, or used in processing iron oxide, stockpiling energy when it's needed, and aiding in making industry cleaner. If you have a city that doesn't have enough sunny days to make solar a single solution, or they simply dislike solar and wind, metal burning can be implemented as existing coal and natural gas plants can be modified to burn iron. Just replace the coal or gas burners with iron powder burners, it can be done faster and cheaper than building a nuclear power plant, and it would visually look no different to the people in the city. People living there would not notice any difference other than cleaner air and possibly cheaper electricity. It's the perfect solution for those who think solar and wind can't produce enough energy by themselves reliably, and those who are afraid of nuclear. Ideally, a power grid is best when it utilizes multiple energy sources and storage solutions, such as a combination of wind, solar, and metal burning, with gravity batteries, thermal batteries, or hydrogen production to store extra energy when needed. Nuclear is also a good option, but I understand why people are afraid of it. Iron burning provides a solution to this too. A nuclear reactor, small modular or full scale, can be built far away from urban areas, away from where people live. The plant can produce clean hydrogen and power a processing plant, allowing for energy from the plant to be transported to the cities across the country or continent. A large solar farm in the middle of the desert could serve the same purpose, or a hydroelectric system, or geothermal, or wave energy. Basically, any clean energy source can be used in this loop. Trains are diesel electric. Trains can, and currently are being built, to use batteries or hydrogen. Due to the nature of trains, mass limitations aren't a big deal, so massive batteries or hydrogen systems can be used viably. In a metal burning supply loop, hydrogen would be abundant, and so would electricity, so electric or hydrogen trains can be used, further reducing the lifetime carbon footprint. Electric excavators are also being used in mining more and more. Basically, the full lifetime carbon emissions of a metal burning system can be reduced to levels low enough to ultimately not matter. There is even a possibility of making cars that behave like plug-in hybrids using small metal burners. The car would be charged like a conventional EV or hybrid, but would also have an aluminum powder burner that can charge the battery when they get low for extended range. Now, this is a bit more out there. The aluminum powder storage would need to be very strong to prevent damage and accidents and fires. And refilling would need to be handled in a way that the people aren't exposed to the aluminum powder. But if the technical aspects can be overcome, a metal-burning hybrid car would be clean, have long range, and would be a lot cheaper to run. Again, iron and aluminum are far less volatile than fossil fuels. The price to fill an aluminum car would be lower than gasoline, and not subject to the same fluctuations. It would also prevent other countries from controlling your fuel price. Right now, oil nations can intentionally raise prices on gasoline if they want. Fossil fuels are a liability in every aspect, and currently do pose a national security risk for most countries that are net importers. Metal burning offers a simple and clean way to tackle climate change without any of the drawbacks or complaints of other renewables. Although it would work in tandem with them, it would offer the stability and reliability that people expect and need without needing the waste of fossil fuel usage. Some countries are already exploring it. Attention for metal burning has increased in the last few years. The more people who know about it and advocate for it, the harder it'll be for the you-know-who industry to stop it.